when you think of uh, again, going to our theme of principalities and powers and the rulers of the darkness of this age and, and how they try to control everything, how they try to be in power, how they try to be in authority, and how they try to do all this destructive things, how God's always able to bring it for good. Uh, again, thinking of like Esther and with Haman, and he's going to kill all the Israelites. He's got it all planned out. He's got the gallows built for Mordecai, and he's ready, and he's got it all planned. And at the very last hour, at the last minute, Esther takes a chance, and she goes before the king, and she could be put to death, and she doesn't know if he's going to receive her or not. And he does, and she's able to plead for the life of her people. And the next thing you know, Mordecai is hanging from the very gallows he built. <laughs> And the ones that were going to kill all the Israelites end up getting killed by them. Um, and God's able to rescue them. And I, I think of Daniel. And you have these guys that are in authority and they, they, they work it out and they get into the government and they got all these plans and they get this law. And man, they're going to kill Daniel. They're going to get him thrown into the lion's den. And they did it. They won a victory. They got him thrown into the lion's den. And God shuts the mouth of the lion, sends his angel. Daniel Sleeping on the lions, nice and comfortable. I don't know. Maybe he didn't sleep. <laughs> Maybe he stayed awake praying, curled up. They're, they're snuggled. The lions are purring with him. He's petting them. <laughs> I don't know what it looked like. <laughs> but then he's brought out the next day. And what happens to those very ones that had gotten thrown them into? They get thrown in the lion's den and they are destroyed before they even hit the ground. The lions tear them into pieces. And, and that is one of the ways that God can do it at the very end. Here's the ones that are saying, Jesus isn't our king. We have no king but Caesar. They're going to turn against Jesus. And they put Jesus to death. And what happens? Just a little bit later, about 40 years later or so, in 70 AD, the temple is destroyed. Jerusalem is taken over. The, the Romans come in and they take every other person and they crucify them and they line the streets with individuals being crucified all over the city death and destruction reign and the very thing they didn't want to lose was their power their authority their ability to be able to do what they wanted to do and they lost it all not only did they lose their authority and their power and their position and their prestige they lost their city they lost their country they lost their land and they were scattered into the nations in the nations that wanted to kill them and thousand years later or more, here comes a madman by the name of Adolf Hitler, and he's going to try to destroy them all again. And they put millions to death. And the very thing that they thought they were going to do in getting rid of Jesus ended up coming right back on them, and they lost. And Jesus didn't rejoice in that, but he wept over what was coming. Even the women behind him weeping as he's been whipped, and he's falling and can barely, barely carry the cross. And he turns around to the women and he says, Don't weep for me. Weep for yourself and for your children. What the enemy's trying to do to me is leading to great victory. But what you have done in rejecting me is going to lead to death and destruction and the loss of their nation. And so the, these principalities, powers, rulers of darkness of this age, all these forces, and so many individuals in governments today in our country and around the world, individuals aligning themselves with forces of darkness and evil, going against God, going against the Bible, going against his word, going against his people, it will come back on them. It will. And God is going to raise up a church in our country and around the world of individuals, people that are committed to him, people that are sold out to unity that comes in Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit. And there is going to be a remnant that is saved and comes out in victory and power and shines and walks in the blessings of God. And as people see them being blessed by God, they're going to get angry and they're going to attack them and they're going to go against them. But God is always going to bring us through in victory because eye has not seen, ear has not heard, nor has mind conceived what God has planned for those that love him. Let us love God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength that we can be part of the great victory that is to come in our world and in our country. In Jesus' name.